it's time to get away from it all and relax. It's time to go fishing. So whether you're a weekend fisherman, a seasoned angler, or even if you just enjoy the beauty of our great outdoors, good fishing is the show for you. So climb aboard for another exciting and informative half hour of good fishing with America's most versatile fisherman, Dave Winkleman. Good Fishing is the show that reveals the fish-catching secrets of Babe and his Good Fishing research team members. So get ready for today's brand new edition of America's favorite fishing show, Good Fishing. Good Fishing is brought to you in part by... Joining me here today on America's fishing show, Good Fishing. Today's program is going to be one of the most exciting trips for Trophy Northern Pike that's ever been captured on film or videotape. I'll be accompanied for this fantastic fishing trip by the editor of Fins and Feathers magazine, Dave Greer, and by the young man who truly made it all happen, our guide, Moses Bird. But before we take off for Northern Canada, it's time for my Good Fishing Tip of the Week. You know, I get just as frustrated as the next guy does when a big fish boils behind my bait and misses it. Yeah, I like to watch them, but I'd much rather catch them. And if you're having a problem with short strikers, here's a tip that might help you as well. And here it is. It's called a stinger hook. Now, basically, what the stinger hook does is just attach here and makes your other hook longer. Let me show you. Simply pops on the hook like so, but the vinyl coating keeps it attached in one spot. And you'll notice by doing so, the hook extends here down past the skirt of your spinnerbait or buzzbait. And when he rolls short, hey, it does the job on him. So hopefully next time, rather than hollering at your buddy to watch the swirl, he'll be telling him to get the net. We'll be right back with more good fishing after these messages. This is Prime Co Filament Fishing Line. Two fibers combine for half the stretch of monofilament line. So it's more sensitive. So fast, so powerful, it gives you the advantage to outfish all the rest. Prime Co Filament. Sensitive, fast, powerful. From DuPont. Now, before we begin fishing, I wanted to tell you that first, this day didn't just start by the three of us hopping in the boat and going fishing. I promise you, it wasn't that easy. Because to get into Trophy Lake, Moses informed us that we'd have to do a little work first and portage our gear a short distance to a small stream where he had another boat waiting to take us the last mile or so into Trophy Lake. Now, by the time we'd gotten this far, I've got to admit both Dave and I were as excited as a couple of kids on Christmas Eve and everything was running according to plan, when all of a sudden, up ahead, we ran out of river. A shortage of rain had lowered the stream to a point where we all had to get out and push and pull and drag our boat and canoe the remaining distance. I mean to tell you, we had some work ahead of us, and by the time we got to a third set of rapids, we were all wondering if it was really going to be worth it. But I'll tell you what, after you see today's show, you'll know it was worth every single drop of sweat. Fish hit right at the boat, babe. Look at that oh. fish. Look at that fish. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a big fish. I guess that's a good fish. It's the biggest northern I've ever caught. It's You're not it. caught yet. I was just going to say. <laughs> Holy smokes. I was just going to say I'll cast out one time out shallow. <sighs> he ain't done yet. No. <laughs> you like that one, eh, dear? That's a big fish. <laughs> Knees are a little weak. <laughs> oh. Look at the size of that thing. How big do you think it is, Moses? Oh, Moses. Look at that mouth. 18? Look at that mouth. Oh. No. The wind caught this thing and the way it went. I'm not kidding you, I can... My legs are just shaking on this. I see that. Here, don't let him get into my line. No. <laughs> Heck of a thing to say, huh? <laughs> I cast it and that fluted spoon just took off for the high heavens. 
When you get him in here, do you want uh, me to take some quick photos up for you? Sure. Watch. Watch. Okay? Yeah. Here, hang on just... Okay. That fish is pretty green yet. That's a large snake, man. <sighs> I mean, that's... <sighs> It's not a large snake. That puppy is bigger than a large snake. <laughs> Hang on, Moses. Look at you... that fish. What do you think he goes? That is a big northern. Where do you think he goes? She. I think go about 20. Oh. Yeah, I would say that one will go about 20. You want to hold it quick? Yeah. Look at the head on that thing. That's a big head. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh, that's you get. boy. Big fish. Yeah. Big fish. Heavy. Heavy fish. How does it feel to release a 20-pounder? <laughs> you don't want to, do you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. You don't want to, but look at that. Ah. No stars. No. Beautiful. Perfect fish. Yeah. Just a perfect fish. But if we are going to release them... Yep, let's get, her, let's get her in. Not to tell you what to do or anything. Nope. <laughs> Came out of nowhere in that real shallow water, and then okay, ready? There you go. Yeah. Do you like that laid-down grass we just went through? I'd rather have deep grass than a wood patch. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to come any shallower than they have to come. You know? Mm-hmm. This is my gut feeling. They're just setting up an ambush spot. They don't have any... I mean... They ain't into sun tanning. Yeah. Things like that. You guys hear about muskies coming in and taking a long look. Well, these pike are sitting just like that, too. Uh-huh. Just, just coming in and they're just waiting they, for what it. What do again. they have to fear? Yeah. There's nothing to fear out here. With the top predator well, in the you're lake. You're the biggest mother in the lake. I mean, you can do about what you want to do. There. Oh, he's off. Big fish? No, I got it still. Big fish? It's off. No, it isn't off. It's still hitting all the way in. It never was on. Felt like a big fish. That was it, maybe. Oh. There, you got it. No, this is another one that followed right in. This is a big fish, though, too. It's a big fish, yeah. This is a big fish. I mean, this is a heavy rod. This is a 54 here. Oh, you don't. I said, boat. Aluminum boat with the rivets on it. Yeah. If you want, you can get a couple of photos of it. Pretty fish. Okay, I will. She's very green yet, though. See? <laughs> <laughs> Did that fish hit right away? You dropped the spoon back. I dropped the it. spoon back. I seen her follow in real deep. And it came up and it rolled, and I dropped the spoon back, and it came back out from underneath the boat and hit it. Well, I hope I have this camera out. Thinking you're going to get the fish in the boat here. Oh, I'll get it in the boat. <laughs> She's hooked pretty good. I, this fish is mine. It's not that big of a fish. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's... We should wait a minute. <laughs> what do you think, girl? <laughs> I know. Here she comes. Okay, probably 
Probably ready to bring in, huh? Oh, not I yet. Keep, I keep not thinking yet. that, but the fish doesn't. <laughs> oh. Try and land her here. Hold on, baby. Look at that head. Those are big heads. Big pretty fish. Pretty fish. Oh. Hold it. Oh, that's nice. One more. Perfect. Yeah. with more good fishing after these I use the sharp eyes of an eagle this eagle the z7000 sonar it spots and tracks walleye on the best detailed liquid crystal display ever a picture three times clearer than the nearest competitor the eagle z7000 also has a speedometer temperature gauge and trip log built right in with all its other features to find walleye and other fish now you might think this eagle z7000 is too good to be true and there must be a catch well there is Nice day for fishing, eh? Mm. Can we see the shore from 10 miles out? Lucky we got us a mariner. It's a natural out here. Protected inside and out so it don't corrode. Now, this one will run for years. But the best thing about a mariner is it always starts when you need it. I need it. For boating's ups and downs, a mariner outboard's better in the long run. If you ain't gonna fish it, how about cutting some bait? Mm. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. I've seen her roll. She came out. I've seen that big wig go back in there. Oh, man, this one's only 20 pounds or so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the seat has seen better days. Look at Oh, i seen her roll. When I threw back up in there, just gator rolled on me. I know you're not done yet. But then I seen, when I was rolling the spoon in, I seen the water swell up behind it, and I knew she was coming, and I dropped the spoon back, and that's all it took. I thought she stayed right there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Where are you? Where are you? Want some coffee? You don't think I'd do that, do you? <laughs> That's what you call confidence or stupidity, either way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Look at that fish. That's incredible. This one will go over 20, I think, maybe. Mm. Look how broad they are across the back. It's pretty green yet. This is a big fat fish. It's not as not so skinny like the other ones. This is all a twenty. I mean, it's all a twenty. You do have her hooked good. She's hooked good. You got a couple into her. Oh, she might try once more here. Ouch. She burned the line on my hand there. Brr, how you like it so far? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is. Yeah, my dad always said keep your nose clean and you'll take trips like this someday. <laughs> it's bad. Isn't this incredible? Oh. The name of this lake is Trophy Lake, right? Yeah. Ah. Didn't you say that you had one come up and hit an oar one time in here? Take yeah. a bite out of an oar? Yeah. <laughs> Got her? Oh, I'll get her. Yes, I gotta get her the right way. I don't want to hurt her gills. No. Look at that. You want to see something here? Look at this. 
Judge Greer. Look at sticking out of her throat. There's the tail of another northern pike down in there. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. This is a big fat fish. Oh. That's a full fish. That's a nice shot. And it's Just got like... a bite on its tail. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. What would have even thought about giving Babe, you... Babe, hold her up. Face her face just like that. Turn her again out like that. That's good. I get a look at the back like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try uh, another one for you, too. There you go. Okay. Oh, beautiful fish. Boy, wasn't that fish magnificent? And you know what else? To release it to fight again just makes it seem all that much more special. But now to change the subject, probably the number one thing you've all been waiting for is, where exactly is this Trophy Lake? Well, I won't hold you in suspense any longer. Trophy Lake is located in northeastern Saskatchewan, just a stone's throw away from Reindeer Lake, which we featured here on Good Fishing before. But more importantly than what lake we were fishing is how we were fishing the lake. Because all too many people suffer from what I call wilderness water syndrome. And what this is, is a misconception about these remote Canadian lakes. Some fishermen think they can just jump off of the float plane, start casting anywhere, and expect to catch a bunch of big suicidal fish. Well, I'm sorry, but that just isn't so. Now, the first part of the lesson here is to understand that the trophy northern pike feed on adult walleyes and adult northern pike. And I'm talking eating things that are two, three, four, five, six pounds and sometimes even bigger. So consequently, to find the big trophies, you've got to look in the areas where the other fish are feeding. As you can see here from this aerial graphic, fish up here in Canada relate to structure just like they do back in the States. Here, some of the better areas we found were small rocky reefs or islands where the walleyes came in to feed. And the numerous cabbage beds Moses brought us to always seemed to hold a couple of big pike. But one area we could always count on for a big gator was down timber. All we had to do was cast parallel to the tree and hold on. Because nine times out of ten, bingo. You want the net on this one? I don't know how big that thing is. Oh. How big is it? 25? Oh, yeah. Big. Right. You think it's 25? And you know what? It went nip, nip behind like a little bitty fish. <laughs> Got one hook in it, so. Photos of this one. Running at it? How big do you think it is, Moses? I don't want to put a net on that thing. No, that's not a 25, is it? Not well, a uh, 22, 23. Thanks. <laughs> 22 or 23, and I'm sitting here deciding whether I should net it. This is one big muscle. I get her. I want to try. Oh, jeez. Just getting soaked. Not yet. Oh. Oh, just the tiniest bit of skin holding on. I mean, the tiniest bit of skin holding on. <laughs> One little thread of skin is holding that fish That's on. That's it? Yes. How are your knees doing? <laughs> huh? Got the same as my heart. Look at that. You'll get a bigger one. <laughs> All right, baby. That's... Oh, come back here. I didn't get a chance. Can we scoot over there and give her a little revive? Yeah. Yeah. She'd get me over there. I want to revive her. Okay. There, she's righting herself. Yeah, she's not hurt. I mean, she no. wasn't. There she oh, yeah. goes. There she goes. Now she's got ballast. Should have I done that? I mean, should have I done and that? And just kicks it like, sure. Oh. 
We'll be right back with more good fishing after these messages. Sharing this fantastic experience with me. And thanks to Moses Bird, our guide. Because without Moses, none of this would have been possible. And a special thanks to our gracious host, Mr. Dick Chrysler from Tate Island Lodge. But now let's head over to the kitchen where Charlie's ready to share another of her recipes with us from her Strictly Fish cookbook. Today I'm going to share with you a broiled fish fillets with cheese sauce recipe. That's really delicious, and I know it'll become a winner in your household. So go get a pencil and paper so you can jot this one down. Now here's the list of ingredients you'll need. Two to three pounds of walleye fillets, three cups of soft grated breadcrumbs, salad or olive oil, and your favorite cheese sauce. Before you begin, preheat your broiler to 350 degrees. Now brush your fillets with olive oil. And then dredge them in breadcrumbs and place them on the broiler. Now broil for 15 minutes, turning once. Now pour your warm cheese sauce over the fillets. Now these broiled fish fillets will melt in your mouth. I want to thank each and every one of you for going fishing with me today. And if there's any more information I can share with you about today's show, please feel free to drop me a line and send it along with a self-addressed stamped envelope to Babe, Post Office Box 407, Brainerd, Minnesota, 56401. That's Babe, Post Office Box 407, Brainerd, Minnesota, 56401. And I promise we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. But again, everybody, thanks so much for watching. And until next week, hey, good fishing. Good fishing has been brought